So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a spreader bar. Um, in my introduction video, you probably saw me making this, uh, or talking about this. This is just a simple uh, spreader bar made out of red oak, uh, dowel rod, and combined with a couple pieces of hardware. Now, um, as I'm sure many of you have noticed, this wasn't built very well. Uh, these eyelets here, not lined up exactly. I got paint on the hardware. so. Um, Today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to make the better version of what this was supposed to be. Um, I made this kind of in a flash on a whim, so it's not too bad for a, a quick sort of thing, but I figured now with a little bit of planning I can do a much better job. So to start out with the supplies you're going to need for this project, um, here what we have is we've got a 36 inch red oak um, 1 inch dowel rod. You can go a little thinner than this if you so wanted to, or you could go with a square dowel rod or any number of other ways of doing this. Uh, I personally like it round. I personally like it a little bit shorter than 36 inches. I'm a short guy, and uh, personally, the spreader bar doesn't have to be long to do its job. So this distance is, of course, flexible to you, and you can decide what to, what to do with it. Mine today is going to be about 25 inches long. Uh, I think about 25 and a half is what it ends up being. Um, and this also gives me a little bit of extra dowel rod that I'm going to be using for a later project. As far as the tools that you're going to be needing on this uh, today, what you're going to need is you're going to need, of course, a uh, there we go. pencil for marking, um, measuring tape is always a good thing to have around. You're going to need a couple pieces of hardware from the hardware store. These would be um, heavier duty stainless steel eye bolts with uh, the associated nuts. We're going to need these um, uh, threaded lag screws, uh, screw eyes, and these are going to be uh, what are going to go in on the ends. These are going to go in on the middle uh, for more of the wrist attachment points. Um, if you're planning on doing any kind of a finishing, you might want to pick up some finishing materials like, um, in this case, I'm going to be just using spray paint, and uh, of course you need to have good sanding material to do that uh, spray paint job well. And um, as far as the actual hand tools themselves, today I'm going to be using a Dremel tool. I'm also going to be using my power drill. And we're also going to be using a uh, hand saw and uh, just a good pair of pliers to tighten down these bolts. Or, of course, you can always use something like a ratchet. So, um, Again, a lot of the information here is going to be flexible depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to modify that. Um, but the first thing first is that we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and saw this down to the length that I want. The best way to do this is just um, to decide your length here is to lay out a measuring tape on the floor and stand over it. Find the comfortable uh, spreading position that you want for your bar, measure it, and then simply measure that out here on your dowel rod. In this case, uh, like I had said, my dowel rod should be about yeah, just about 25, somewhere between 25 and 26 inches. Um, to me, it's not really too specific that it be something directly because it's all about whatever's comfortable for you. This happened to be the comfortable length that I chose. So, um, as you can see, I did go ahead and I've already kind of marked that point here on my wood. And now we're just going to go ahead and saw it. I'm going to go ahead and kind of grab this... Uh, demo unit here again. Um, the other types of marking that you're going to want to make is where you want your, uh, your, your, your center two points here. So I'm going to kind of start out just by uh, taking my measuring tape, seeing how far the other ones were because I haven't really measured that out yet. Oh, right about eight and a half or so. And about ooh, an eight even. So again, uneven there in the initial one. So. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with about eight and a half um, as my attachment point here. So what I'm just going to simply do is I'm simply just going to mark it out. Um, eight and a 
half. And again, that's going to kind of just make our final product look much more, uh, much more seamless. Now, the next thing we need to do is we kind of need to make a line that transects both of them. This is going to be kind of what keeps those things stable. So it's important to find a way to get yourself a good level line. I'm going to go ahead and kind of shift the camera around while you kind of see what I'm doing. It's probably hard from that angle. What I'm just doing is I'm trying to line up this tape measure so it's mostly level. Again, I'm not, um, I'm a perfectionist, but to me if it's uh, close and gets the job done, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I mean, this whole product uh, cost me about ten dollars to make. I'm not going to worry too much. I've already given one of these spreader bars away to a friend, so uh, to me it doesn't matter that it's not 100% right, because I'll probably do the same thing. Alright, so now what I'm uh, doing is, again, just marking out a nice level line all the way across. My mechanical pencil is not wanting to work for me. Now, I do plan on finishing this. So normally, if you're going to leave the wood unfinished, you would not want to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to use a sharpie. Felt pens tend to work much easier to mark on things. Thin pencil leads tend to get caught in the grain and then not look too good. All right, I'm just kind of carrying down the marks that I made here. So now I know exactly where to drill. As you can see, that lines up uh, pretty good so far. All right, so now uh, we have to go ahead and kind of just make our um, end measurements here. And what we're just basically going to do is we're just going to take kind of a straight edge point, mark from about the middle to about the middle. Again, just kind of giving us a nice X. That was a bad X, but yeah. Just to kind of give us a good point that we know is uh, about center. This one's off, so I just simply know about where to drill. Having a good X like that, even if it's wrong, will help you better center it because then you'll be able to see where center is easier, especially if you actually have that measurement slightly wrong. So, um, again, what we're just simply doing is we're going to kind of bisect it. My pen is dying. Thank God, this is the end of the marking. All right. Alright, so now we have some good measurements here and uh, some good marks for where we want to make our, uh, our cuts. As you can see, there's a little bit of just crud left there on the end. Um, I'm just going to kind of trim that off here real quick with the saw. Um, normally, if you're woodworking, the best thing to do to avoid this is change directions halfway through your cut. Um, there we go. Much better. This is, um, by the way, this is 180 grit paper. It's not very strong, but it's enough to uh, to look good. Um, especially, it's, it's good for paint jobs and things. All right, so now what we're going to do, we have all of our marks made. We've got the piece cut to size. What we're going to go ahead and do is start drilling pilot holes. This is where I'm using the Dremel. You, if you just have a power drill, you can use just your power drill with a much smaller bit. The idea is that you're just trying to make a smaller hole you can use as a guide for the bigger hole that you're making. So it's uh, it's definitely a good thing to have and do. I'm going to go out and move my vice over here. Now normally I would want to do this um, with a slightly bigger um, you know, jig or something like that, something like that to really hold it level and, and things like that because we want to make sure that that hole is nice and centered. I mean, looking at the size of this eyeball, it's going to take out about half the wood here in the middle. 
So what we need to do is we need to make sure that that's really good and level, or we're going to deal with cracking, splitting, uh, or even having it kind of pierce out the side. So obviously there's a lot of things to consider when you're making this drill. Just if, if you're like me and you don't have a huge shop to work with, do as best you can. Another reason I like a vise like this one, it has these great multiple center bars. If you can see those, if you can see those, yeah. Um, this lets me press fit this against those, so I've got an idea of what is mostly going to be level, because that's going to be pretty much perpendicular to what's going on. So it's an easy way just to kind of hold it there to nearly center. Um, all right, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and use the power drill. Now it's time for the horizontal pilot holes. Now this one we don't have as good of a guide for, for what is straight level. Um, so the main thing to do is just try to focus on keeping your rod the same when you move from one side to the other. One good thing about drilling, make sure to kind of go in and out a little bit. It's, you're really fucking the hole. You're not really uh, uh, just going all the way through. Because otherwise, uh, dust and debris will get caught up inside the threads of your drill bit, causing it to heat up, not go anywhere, and break your drill bit faster. All right. And that took us all the way through. two nice pilot holes there. Uh, and those are much better, much more even and consistent than my first model. So I'm pleased with that progress. Now what we're going to do is we're going to step up those holes to the bigger drill bit. Uh, just to let you know, that was an eighth inch drill bit right there. Um, I'm going to have the full materials list um, on the, uh, in the description. Uh, that was an eighth inch drill bit. This is a five sixteenth inch drill bit. These are uh, three eighths inch by four and a half inch lag thread screw eyes. These are three and seven eighths inch eye bolts with three eighths inch nuts. Those are some small nuts. As you can see, that made real short work of that bar. Um, good. But as you can see now, we've got two consistent holes. see how deep we are now. And that's much better overall. So, um, good. Now that we have a good hole here, let's flip it over. We're going to do the same on the other side. Sort of checking my level here. Should have good and on target. I 
So that's my depth. Pull out carefully there. And again, I think we've just made another great hole. So, excellent. Now we're done with the drill. You've had to do that by hand, I'm sorry. Buy a drill. They're not too expensive. Harbor Freight Tools. Get you the best deals every time. Uh, so now actually, hardware, we're going to kind of prep it for finishing. So that way we've got a finished wooden rod that we just want to install the hardware on. That's going to keep us from uh, doing like I did and painting the hardware. Um, I just got a low grit paper. This is uh, 180 grit, like I said before, I think. Um, and we're just going to be kind of going through. Uh, this is going to prep the surface nice. It's going to make the paint adhere to it really well. It's going to give it a nice, smooth, even finish. Um, I want to make sure I do get a lot of good sanding in around that hole. Um, now, something else you can do, by the way, uh, and I haven't done it here, just because I like a, I do prefer a hardware aesthetic. I like, um, I like things to look like they have nuts and bolts and stuff like that. You can also drill further into the wood with a slightly bigger drill bit uh, to hide your nuts inside of the wood. Um, temptation to make a joke there's high, but I'll avoid it. Um, the idea is is uh, you just want to basically, if you want to give it a more finished look, that's something you can do. But Sanding takes a lot of time, so I'm probably going to fast forward. Again, give it a couple nice strokes here. Again, stroking my wood. Just chuckle if you want. Um. <laughs> you could also do something simple like stain the wood. Um, rather than painting it, I personally just love the, uh, most of my gear is black and silver, so I kind of just like to keep it that way. Um, but there we have it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my, uh, well, brand new, but I was going to say faithful, but I just got it, so brand new. Tack cloth here. Uh, tack cloth is something simple you can get at most hardware stores. Uh, if you're doing paint finishing, that kind of thing, it's great to have around. It's just basically a fabric with a little bit of tack on it. So it kind of just tacks up, um, gets a little sticky, um, and you just use it to wipe the dust off the material after you've sanded it. So again, this just makes it real easy for the paint to adhere because the paint's not trying to adhere to the dust particles. It's just trying to adhere to the uh, wood itself. All right. Great. Um, so now we have our sanded down, uh, drilled out piece of dowel rod, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab a spray paint and start working. Oh, hey guys, one last note before I uh, start painting. I want to show you guys the rig that I used to, uh, do, to do the spray painting on the first one because I think it was really effective. Um, what I have here is I've got two wire coat hangers, and basically I'm just running them through the holes in the middle. Uh, this way that lets me spray paint around all edges and things like that. 
After it's dried a couple coats, of course I'm obviously going to be sanding between coats, I can also flip it over, so then that way then it gets an even consistent paint job. Um, excellent guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and start spray painting. Uh, I did go ahead and I've gotten two coats of paint on this last night, it's looking pretty good. Um, as you can see, see, there's still some grain marks and things like there on the woods. So that's kind of nice. It gives it a nice, uh, uh, slightly more natural look. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just do one more sand on this and one more paint on this um, before we're done. This way you guys can also see part of that finishing process. Cause it's the same really between coats. So basically what we're going to do is, uh, as you can see, this is a high gloss paint. Uh, high gloss paint is great for finishing because then all you pretty much have to just do is look for any part that's shiny and sand it down. So what we're just doing is we're taking the, uh, the sandpaper and we are just simply running it on the wood. Might do another two coats actually. But We don't want to forget the ends. And as you can see, we still actually have some spots where we can see some wood there. So that means it's definitely good for uh, another coat or two. Especially if you can see bare wood like that. So. Good, good. Now we're just going to go ahead and... Uh, Use our handy dandy tack cloth to clean off the paint dust. As you can see, we are pulling quite a bit off of it using that tack cloth, so. As you can see, we, it does kind of give a little bit of shine back when um, after you'd use that uh, sandpaper and the tack cloth, but it's definitely not near the uh, the high gloss finish that my paint is. So excellent. So now we're gonna go ahead and just kind of take it outside, and we're gonna go ahead and do another coat. We have just kind of that drying rag that I uh, made. I did go ahead and I kind of threw it up on the spreader bar. It seemed like an easy way of. Uh, holding it up a little bit further away so that we don't end up painting your hand. But uh, so spray painting is really easy. Yeah, you just want to have long, consistent strokes, just giving it a good coat. There we go. This coat was a little bit thicker than it should have been, but uh, I'll be, still be all right, especially after another sand and things. So excellent. Uh, now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna hang this up to dry, and um, wait. Once it's dry, we're gonna sand it and tack it and spray it again. Foreseen circumstances, I'm not able to show you how I installed the hardware. 
So what I wanted to do instead is kind of give you a basic idea of how I did that, uh, even though the hardware is already in the piece. Uh, the first thing that I did was I screwed in the uh, eye bolts uh, into the those uh, pilot holes that we drilled earlier. Again, it did take a good deal of force, so I recommend using either a screwdriver to uh, kind of get some additional leverage on that bolt, or if you have a big screwdriver or a breaker bar, you could also use that. Next, you want to tighten down that bolt with a pair of channel locks. You just want to get it mostly secure. You're going to do the major tightening later. Once you have your eye bolt in there good and tight, um, you want to go ahead and mount that into your vise, or just simply hold on to your bar as best you can if you don't have a vise. What you're going to want to do then is use the, eye, uh, the screw eyes here. Again, using a large breaker bar or screwdriver, anything you can do to get more force, you're going to want to push down and twist on that screw eye to get it nicely locked in place. Make sure to, make, uh, to really bury those threads deep. It's going to make sure that that screw eye stays secure. Um, pretty much from there, you just mirror that same action on the other side, first mounting the screw, eye, uh, the screw bolt, then mounting the screw eye, tightening everything up. After that, what you're going to do is you are going to go ahead and put the uh, screw eye back, uh, sc pardon me, uh, screw bolt back in the vise, and then you're going to take uh, your hacksaw and you're going to be cutting off that bolt, try to get as flush as possible. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure that you have nice clean edges here and you don't have a big old bolt hanging off the edge and unless that's the look you're going for. Um, after you've done that, you either want to take a, a metal file or a Dremel tool and buff out the edges of that bolt. You want to make sure that you don't leave any sharp edges. I know some people are into blood, but that's not me. I prefer to make sure I, uh, no one gets hurt by this thing. Um, it's not too much. And um, so once everything is, uh, is good and secure, I used a, uh, just a ratchet here to tighten down my bolts a little bit further, uh, making sure that everything was really locked in place. I'm going to go back and do some small things like uh, remove the labels or touch up any of the tool marks that I might have left with hobby paint, just to make sure that the overall bar has an excellent appearance. So a couple of notes to customize this project to your needs. Uh, of course, size, you can change that at any point. Hardware style, there's a number of screw eyes available and things like that. Especially online, you can find other metal finishes and things like that. Of course, you can always paint it different colors, do different wood finishing techniques, even carve it or uh, wood burn it or write someone's name in it or heck, you could even substitute a, uh, a wood bar for an acrylic or plastic bar and light the thing up or any number of other ways of, uh, of doing the same kind of stuff. So I really look forward to seeing the ideas that you guys have out there. Again, this was a cheap $10 Home Depot project you can do in a weekend, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, your results. As always, guys, stay safe out there, and uh, let me know if you have any ideas or uh, things like that you'd like me to cover. Have a good one.